Today, the 27th of September, is what we call Founder's Obit. It's the date of the death of the school's founder, William of Wickham, Bishop of Winchester and Lord Chancellor. Usually, the service is celebrated in the cathedral, but we can't do that this year, hence this special presentation. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name liveth forevermore. The people will tell of their wisdom, and the congregation will show forth their praise. Amen. In founding New College and Winchester, William of Wickham's aim was to create institutions that would give the best possible education to those who would benefit from it, regardless of their background. He intended to raise the standard of English education, creating a scholarly elite which would more effectively serve God and the King. The manuscript behind me is the earliest surviving copy of the College Statutes, a set of instructions 35,000 words long that set out how the College was to be run. At the beginning, Wickham explains his intention to create a perpetual college of poor and needy scholar clerks intending to learn more grammar near the city of Winchester. In one sense, there was nothing particularly unusual about this. Many such schools teaching Latin grammar to boys had been established in towns across medieval England. What was different about Winchester was its size and ambition, with its 70 scholars and dozens of fee-paying commoners it was certainly the largest school of its day. Winchester shaped the lives of thousands of young men who studied here, but the school has also had a broader impact on the history of English education. It became a model for many other schools founded in the 15th and 16th centuries, including Eton College. Winchester was at the cutting edge of scholarship and educational innovation in late medieval England. Its masters were consistently men of high academic standing, and many of its early pupils went on to become leading scholars and teachers. William Grosin was the first Englishman to study ancient Greek, while John Stambridge and William Horman pioneered a new approach to learning Latin. Wickham's legacy of innovation in scholarship and education continued in later periods. In the 16th century, Christopher Johnson taught his pupils the latest theories about comets and described experiments on mice. Thomas Arnold, the most important school reformer of the Victorian era, was educated at Winchester. And at the turn of the 20th century, Winchester was the first school to construct a building specifically for the teaching of science. In its 638-year history, Winchester College has produced just one Prime Minister, a now almost forgotten man called Henry Addington. William of Wickham wanted the hard-working, dutiful boys educated at Winchester to go out into the country and serve it. A great number of men have left this place to serve in the Houses of Parliament and in Cabinet. Only Addington made it all the way to the top job but another man came very close. His name was Hugh Gateskill. He was leader of the Labour Party between 1955 and his death in 1963. This Wickhamist, born into privilege and luxury, ended up leading the working class movement. He chose to support the underdog. In 1919, when he was 12, Hugh Gateskill ran into an old friend of his father on the street in central Oxford. He told him that his mother was sending him to Winchester College. You don't know how lucky you are, said the man. Only one boy in 10,000 has the chance of an education like that. Gateskill claimed later that this was his first awareness of a social problem in Britain. Why, he asked himself, 
did the other 9,999 boys not receive such an education? According to his housemaster in trance, Gateskill always had a sense of justice. He was a natural egalitarian, always wanting to right wrongs and tackle unfairness. In 1926, whilst at New College in Oxford, Gateskill openly supported the miners during the general strike of that year. He declared to an aunt, my future is with the working class. For Gateskill, socialism was not a route out of poverty. He did not come from a mining village or an East End slum. His journey took him from Winchester College and Oxford to the leadership of the working class movement. In the 1920s, he turned down a lectureship at Oxford to teach coal miners in Nottingham. By 1950, he was Chancellor of the Exchequer, and five years later, he had united the party behind his leadership. His politics were based on a desire to change the structure of society so that it promoted equality rather than inequality. The fact that he died a year before Labour won power at an election under Harold Wilson probably means that Winchester College's sole Prime Minister remains the illiberal Henry Addington and not Hugh Gateskill, one of the best Labour Prime Ministers that Britain, and indeed Winchester, never had. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gateway to heaven. We gather at the midpoint of the nave here at Winchester Cathedral by William of Wickham's Chantry Chapel. This magnificent nave was William's gift to the cathedral. And in grateful thanks, the cathedral chapter granted him this chantry where three masses a day were to be said for him in perpetuity in return for his temporal work. This chapel and the buildings of Winchester College and New College Oxford are tangible reminders of his efforts to provide for his soul after death. This is the place where the priest was to stand and pray for William's soul. It was his last will and testament that he should be prayed for by the saints in heaven and by the church here on earth. Only then did he think about the distribution of his worldly wealth. However superstitious his world may seem to us today, William's emphasis on prayer before possessions is a legacy that we would do well to commemorate. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gateway to heaven. O oh, eternal God, the life and resurrection of all them that believe in thee always to be praised, as well as for the dead, as for those that be alive. We give thee most hearty, humble thanks for our founder, William of Wickham, and all our other benefactors, by whose benefits we are here brought up to godliness and the studies of good learning beseeching thee that we, well using all these thy blessings, to the praise and honour of thy holy name, may at length be brought to the immortal glory of thy resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always.
Amen.